That was a wonderful first panel, and I'm very excited to uh, segue into our second panel on achieving a sustainable global future on quality education. This panel of esteemed speakers who collectively oversee a student population of more than 150,000 will focus on the critical role universities and educational programs play in achieving a global sustainable future. We have joining us today, Dr. Michael Crow from Arizona State University, Dr. David Hall from the University of the Virgin Islands, Dr. Harleen Hain from the University of Otago, Dr. Thomas W. Christ from the University of Guam, and Dr. David Lassner from the University of Hawaii. Each of these panelists have many achievements that have led to the successes of their universities, students, and communities. However, because we'll only get to cover a portion of their efforts today, I encourage all of you to view their professional biographies on their university websites to see what other wonderful accomplishments they have made throughout their careers. Before we begin, let's watch a quick video of our speakers today. We will begin uh, with our first speaker, Dr. Michael M. Crow. Dr. Crow is the president of Arizona State University and has spearheaded ASU's rapid groundbreaking transformative evolution into one of the world's best put metropolitan research universities. Lauded as the number one most innovative school in the nation by US News and World Report, ASU is a student-centric, technology-enabled university focused on complex global challenges related to sustainability, economic competitiveness, social embeddedness, entrepreneurship, and global engagement. Under Dr. Crow's leadership, ASU has established 24 new transdisciplinary schools, including the School of Earth and Space Exploration, the School of the Future of Innovation in Society, and the School of Human Evolution and Social Change and launch trailblazing multidisciplinary initiatives, including the Biodesign Institute, the Julie Ann Wrigley Global Institute of Sustainability, and important initiatives in the humanities and social sciences. So our question to President Crow, how is Arizona State University building capacity for a sustainable global future? Well, uh, thank you, uh, Anita. Nice to see you, and uh, nice to have a chance to be here uh, with with all of you. And so, um, you know, for us, uh, what we've decided is that we've made several fundamental er errors in higher education. One was to move too slow relative to global climate change and ultimately sustainability. Uh, the other has been to move too slow and too imprecisely relative to social justice and social justice outcomes. Uh, these are just areas where you know we should uh, hold our heads down a bit because we haven't been able to do more. We've been more focused on our own disciplines, our own structures, and so forth and so on. And so what we what we did at ASU in terms of sustainable global futures was to basically say that sustainability and the outcome of sustainability, and we measure and and define sustainability as that intersection between the natural environment, the earth, how it works uh, by itself without us and all of the things that it does, and then the uh, built environment, which we construct. And sustainability is this interface between the two that allows the earth to always be in its natural productive state and us to always be in balance with it. That's what we call sustainability. We decided to make it a core value of our institution, uh, to make it something that, uh, you know, we would go to zero carbon footprint and we're well on our way. Uh, 
Uh, we would go to uh, massive educational creativity. We've now built the Global Futures Laboratory, which has in it the Institute for Sustainability and the Future of Innovation, in it our new College of Global, Global Futures, in that the new School of Sustainability, the School of Complexity, and the School for the Future of Innovation in Society. Uh, we have uh, launched, um, we have thousands of students in sustainability, thousands of students. Uh, we've built sustainability programs in the business school, in the engineering school, and a thread of sustainability curriculum through the uh, entire institution itself. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing about $150 million a year of sustainability research. Uh, as a part of what we're working on, we're producing new technologies. We're then linking with partner institutions that we can learn uh, with and from. Uh, that we can work with on a global basis. And so we're, we're very interested in that. And so, you know, for us, the building of capacity starts with looking at the design of the university. The designs of most universities are simple replications of the design of every other university. They're just the same thing over and over and over and over. And what we decided was that it was in fact the design which was limiting us from being able to become the kind of sustainability uh, institution, sustainable future uh, driver that we should have been. That has meant uh, building new relationships uh, in the Pacific, building new relationships around areas we do, where we didn't have expertise, thinking differently, acting differently. Uh, and it started with assessing ourselves. Uh, you know, we, we uh, had every kind of the most common, almost robotic, simplistic, mundane argument. Well, who would ever take your degrees in sustainability and who would ever hire these people? Well, we decided we don't really care. What we decided was that we were going to build a sustainability school and build the right kind of intellectual environment. And the thousand graduates that we've had from that school have gone on to do great things at all levels. And so for us, we have been accelerating our activities. We now have consolidated them under this uh, global futures uh, uh, effort. We now have a vice president for global futures. Uh, we are, are building a fantastic uh, headquarters for this global futures research teaching, learning, discovery, and problem-solving enterprise. And so I think to your question about how do you build capacity, the building of capacity starts by taking on sustainability as a core value of the institution. And maybe the last point that I'll make is that the core value is that sustainability is an outcome science. You're working towards something. Understanding is necessary but insufficient. Basic knowledge is necessary but insufficient. Academic papers are necessary but insufficient. Therefore, therefore, because they are all insufficient, uh, we've got to get out ahead of that. So our method has been to make it a core value, to change our design, to change our culture, to change our purpose, and to launch this, uh, what we call uh, outcome-oriented science. And so that's, that's been the approach that we've taken. Thank you very much, uh, President Crow. Always a pleasure to see you. And thank you so much for uh, including the University of Guam under your uh, comprehensive partnership uh, throughout the globe. A uh, wonderful uh, uh, message with regard to uh, uh, beginning with uh, making sustainability a core value uh, and how that uh, can be integrated in a lot of other things that we do as an institution. Thank you very much. Um, sure. And now we will uh, introduce you to Dr. David Hull. Um, Dr. Hull is the president of the University of the Virgin Islands. Uh, he has focused his efforts on increasing recruitment, retention, and graduation rates through initiatives such as Brothers with a Cause, the establishment of the Center for Student Success, and an academic learning center. The university has also forged a close working relationship with the Virgin Islands Department of Education, the Virgin Islands Board of Education, and public and private schools to build pathways to college and careers for the U.S. Virgin Islands students. Under President Hall's leadership, the university received a $1 million pledge to, cre to create a science building and a $5 million gift to create the 13D Student Entrepreneurial Competition and fund the Kara Sokolov Endowed Professorship in Entrepreneurship. The university has also launched a new Caribbean Center for Green Technology, a center for the study of spirituality and professionalism, and an institute for leadership and institutional effectiveness and the UVI Goes Green initiative. My question to you, President Hall, is how is the University of the Virgin Islands building capacity for a sustainable global future? Well, first, thank you for inviting me and uh, the University of Guam is uh, dear uh, to my heart. I was uh, able to visit on, my, on, this, on your 60th uh, anniversary and we 
really uh, enjoyed meeting uh, everyone there and uh, have met uh, President Chris and really appreciate being able to be a part of this. Uh, I would like to answer the question in the following manner, which is that there are certain ingredients that an institution must have in order to really develop uh, a, a culture of sustainability and not just within the institution, but to have an impact on the surrounding area. And the University of the Virgin Islands being the only university in the Virgin Islands, that uh, last point becomes even more critical. The first ingredient, um, as President Crow mentioned, is that uh, sustainability and quality education has to be embedded into the culture of the institution. It has to uh, have a commitment from the highest reaches of the institution. And so in our uh, recent uh, strategic plan, uh, the title is uh, 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 Pathways, or excuse me, um, <clears throat> Greatness Through Innovation. Uh, and the reason we wanted that was that we believe very deeply if we were going to create a sustainability culture that we had to also embed the value of innovation into all of our activities. And we wanted our strategic plan to speak to that. But we also wanted coming out of the hurricanes of 2017, Irma and Maria, we wanted also to make sure the concept of resiliency uh, was embedded into our strategic plan uh, as it is. And I'll talk later about how we have expanded our understanding of what that mission is. But in addition to embedding the value into the part of the institution, uh, the next ingredient is having people who are committed to those ideas. Uh, one of those individuals was a panelist on the prior uh, panel, uh, Dr. Christian Wilson Grimes. Uh, but we've been able to attract some other outstanding individuals, uh, Greg Winnell, Kim Waddell, just to mention uh, a couple who have become anchors of trying to move the institution in that direction. Uh, I, I am not limiting my efforts to those three individuals, but I highlight that to say that this does not always become something even when it's embedded in your strategic plan that every faculty member is going to embrace or every faculty member has the skills expertise to uh, move forward. So having excellent individuals who have a passion for this type of work is the second important ingredient. Uh, the third one is what I call having an institutionalized focus because individuals doing the work alone really doesn't move the needle. And so we've been able to create various entities uh, within the institution that has served as a focal point for sustainability. Uh, we started out a number of years ago creating the Center for Green Technology, the Caribbean Center for Green Technology, which over time, really became the policy think tank for the entire territory of the Virgin Islands around renewable energy uh, matters. So we became the place, senators came, governor came, in order to get the cutting edge insight of what needed to happen in the territory around renewable energy. Another way in which we've institutionalized it is through the EPSCOR program. Uh, we receive a major grant from NSF. We are an EPSCOR jurisdiction. And so much of the focus has, of our EPSCOR project has been uh, in the area of marine science. Uh, and though we sometimes don't think about marine science as being directly connected to sustainability, but by its nature it is because we are working on how do we preserve this beautiful environment that we are fortunate enough to live in. So the research that our marine science faculty members are doing uh, is core to the sustainability uh, mission. And then more recently, uh, again, coming out of the hurricanes, we began to realize that though sustainability captures a uh, excellent part of what it is we're trying to do, the concept of resiliency 
and not just resiliency in a narrow, how do you improve your infrastructure so that it can come back quickly after a hurricane, but all of the human dimensions of resiliency. How do you build more resilient people, more resilient families, more resilient communities? And so we are now in the process of launching a center for resiliency and sustainability because we want both of those concepts to work together under that broader uh, umbrella. Um, and one of the core uh, factors of that is the hazard mitigation work that we're doing. We received a major grant from FEMA to develop the hazard mitigation plan, again, for the entire Virgin Islands. And so the external population is looking to us to help prepare for the next hurricane or the next disaster. But we combine the two sustainability and resiliency because we don't want to just prepare the transportation and technology systems for the next catastrophe. We want to prepare our people, our students, our faculty, individuals in the community for it as well. And then the last thing that I would want to mention in regards to institutionalized focus is the fact that we are now beginning to have conversations with the University of Puerto Rico about looking at economic resiliency from a regional perspective. Because in order for uh, island territories to sustain themselves, there really has to be an economic feature and focus to it because it becomes a core of our ability to fund uh, all of the needs that exist among our people. It also becomes the focus that allows us to be able to overcome uh, those tragedies. Uh, and so sustainability for us has evolved over time and some of our experiences like the hurricanes and now the pandemic has changed and altered our, I would say deepened our understanding. The point I want to end on, though, is the last ingredient for sustainability is getting the support for external partners, because the university, and especially a small university such as ours, cannot sustain itself nor contribute to the sustainability movement just based on the resources that we have. And an example of how our local government has stood up to that challenge is a year ago, uh, well, a year and a half ago, uh, the territory passed legislation that made tuition for Virgin Islanders free at the University of the Virgin Islands. That was a major step towards sustainability, personal and human sustainability from my perspective, because it was a decision to, best, to invest in the students of these islands so that they could have the skills, the values, to be the future leaders of the territory and thus provide the sustainability that is needed uh, in a global manner. So those are the things we've been working on, but those are the ingredients that I believe any institution that is serious about doing this type of work need to provide and gather uh, for themselves. Thank you very much, Dr. Hall. Uh, we met uh, during our 60th anniversary as well, and I had uh, the good pleasure of uh, reviewing your strategic plan, and I love uh, you're sharing of the ingredients to develop a culture of sustainability in any institution. Uh, a lot of gems uh, learned from that, uh, the importance of embedding innovation as well, uh, recognizing in your particular area uh, the importance of a building capacity for resiliency, uh, bringing people who are passionate about the work on sustainability the importance of partnerships, and uh, we saw how uh, President Crow had explained that as well. So thank you very much for that. Our next uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Harle Harleen Hain. She is the Vice Chancellor at the University of Otago, the Chair of the University's New Zealand Research Committee, and a Fellow of the Royal Society of New Zealand, 
and of the Association for Psychological Science. Otago was named a United Nations Regional Center of Expertise for Sustainability, and University of Otago took the lead by being the first New Zealand university to sign the International Sustainable Development Goals Accord and is actively contributing to these goals through its research, teaching, and operations. The University of Otago also has the Center for Sustainable Cities, an interdisciplinary research center dedicated to providing the research base for innovative solutions to the economic, social, environmental, and cultural development of their urban centers. Vice Chancellor Hayne, how is the University of Otago building capacity for a sustainable global future? Kia ora, Anita. Thank you so much for inviting me to participate in this panel. Um, I'm going to actually pick up right where David left off um, on the topic of students. So at Otago, our view is that as a university, the most important contribution that we make to a sustainable global future is through our students. Um, we recognize that we educate the next generation of doctors and lawyers and accountants and teachers and scientists and musicians. But more importantly, perhaps, um, our role is to nurture the next generation of global citizens. And we really take this latter responsibility very seriously. The first step for us um, is to ensure that poverty is not a barrier to entry to Otago. And each year, the university provides a wide range of support mechanisms to reduce financial hardship for students, including hundreds of scholarships and relief grants. Most recently, in the wake of COVID-19, uh, we immediately established a multi-million dollar student support fund that provides emergency relief, allowing our students to continue their studies despite significant loss of part-time work and family income. We also understand um, and internalize the transformative power of education. Many of the senior leaders here at Otago, including me, are the very first member in their family to attend university. And each year, we actively recruit students from challenging backgrounds, providing them uh, with the academic support that they need to succeed here. We are incredibly proud of the fact that on the basis of national benchmarking data, our students are the most successful in New Zealand, including both our Maori students, the native people of Aotearoa, New Zealand, and our Pacific Island students. The university um, is also the host to the country's oldest and largest medical school, um, and it's also the home to the National Dental School. We have health professional programs in physiotherapy and pharmacy and radiation therapy. And for these programs, we have adopted a mirror on society policy for admission, such that the cultural background of each incoming cohort of students matches the cultural diversity of New Zealand. And by way of one example, since 2016, we have graduated 45 new Maori doctors each year literally changing the human face of medical practice in New Zealand in a very short period of time. Um, as Anita mentioned, Otago was the first New Zealand university to sign the UN Sustainable Development Goal Accord in 2018. And each year we actively communicate our goal for a sustainable future to our student community. At our opening convocation ceremony, for example, we remind our students about the obligations of global citizenship. Um, and in doing so, we challenge them to give back, sharing their time and their talents with others who need their help. And each year, our student community rises to this challenge, uh, contributing more than 20,000 hours of volunteer service to the communities in which they live and study. And much of this activity is directly related to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And it includes things like planting trees, cleaning up beachfront, planting community gardens, and supporting underprivileged children in education. Now, one of the things that I found particularly interesting is that employers are increasingly reporting to me that our graduates question their businesses about their commitment to the SDGs when they're interviewed. And this is a clear indication to me that we are fostering a way of life here at Otago that our students carry with them when they leave us. Um, in short, um, as a residential university, our student, students come to Otago not only to learn, but 
more importantly, perhaps to live. And our unique learning and living environment provides multiple opportunities to teach our students not only the skills that they need to succeed in their chosen profession, but also the skills that they need to solve the big problems that we face in our communities, our countries, and our planet. And in this way, um, here at Otago, we are continuing to build capacity to support a sustainable global future. Thank you very much, Vice Chancellor Hain. Uh, wonderful examples of how student success is exemplified, uh, especially in terms of making college affordable and accessible to those with families uh, uh, from challenging uh, backgrounds. Uh, uh, I love uh, how uh, you've been able to uh, explain this whole transformative education uh, in terms of building um, uh, global citizens, building the capacity for that. And so uh, very excited about that. A lot, a lot to gain from that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Our next uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Thomas Kreis, the president of the University of Guam. Dr. Kreis grew up in the U.S. Virgin Islands. He is a former president of Pacific Lutheran University in Washington State, a graduate and former faculty member of the Air Force Academy. He was also a Fulbright Scholar at the University of the West Indies in Jamaica and has published numerous articles on island literature. One of Dr. Kreis's first major actions as president of the University of Guam is to launch the Patahula Strategic Plan. The Parahulu strategic plan will focus the next five years on areas that will further enhance UOG's ability to provide a valuable education and an engaging experience to its students, serve the needs of its communities in Guam and the region, and enhance the recognition of the university as the flagship research and partnership institution for all of Micronesia. President Christ, how is the University of Guam building capacity for a sustainable global future? Thank you, Anita, and thank you to my fellow panelists. I'm pleased to have um, met each of them in their home environment, with the exception of Harleen. So I look forward to getting to Otago sometime um, soon. And congratulations to uh, New Zealand on the way that you handled the uh, coronavirus. So uh, we're, we're all envying your situation. Um, so uh, let me just uh, point out two directions in that um, in the strategic plan that um, that Anita pointed out: the Parahulo, the Ever Upward strategic plan for UOG, um, the two sort of uh, marquee uh, directions are to be recognized as a research university and to, and to lead Guam and our wider Micronesian region um, as a partnership institution. And as we've heard from the conference today so far, UOG has been growing its research capacity by leaps and bounds over a number of years. Just three years ago, UOG had uh, $8 million in uh, federal research funding, and today we're at over $20 million. And this remarkable achievement, this, it's especially remarkable uh, for an institution of our modest size of about 3,500 students. And much of this research funding is supporting work related to island sustainability, um, and uh, the, the work of a number of our research centers is, uh, is focused on sustainability issues, including, of course, this, the Island Center for Island Sustainability, we also have the Marine Laboratory celebrating its 50th anniversary this year, the Water and Environmental Research Institute, the Western Pacific Tropical Research Center, and the Pacific Island Climate Adaptation Science Center. And so uh, these, each one of these centers has, co has commitments and partnerships with um, the institutions represented on this panel and in this conference series over these weeks. Um, and what we're aiming to do in terms of that idea of being a partnership institution is not just to make a great number of partnerships, but to layer those and to enrich those uh, partnerships with institutions at multiple levels, with connections to researchers and students um, at multiple levels. So that's really important to us as part of the strategic plan. Um, and I think another issue for us and worth uh, commenting on for the, for the audience is that the University of Guam has the distinction of being the only American public university that is charged by its sponsoring government to serve people beyond the jurisdiction of that government. And so we have responsibility to provide, to be the university for two US territories, the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Islands, 
Guam, as well as three independent countries in Micronesia, Palau, the Federated States of Micronesia, and the Republic of the Marshall Islands. And then we also maintain connections with uh, American Samoa and with Hawaii in our, uh, in our Pacific Island uh, US affiliated organizations. And so I think that kind of the, the notion of layered uh, partnership on issues of sustainability helps to build the capacity of our students, of our researchers, of our communities to deal with all the many issues related to sustainability, to creating a sustainable society. And then um, it also then allows us in our neighborhood, our strengthened neighborhood, to make connections to other neighborhoods. And I think many of us in the Pacific uh, are conscious of this sort of dotted line um, across the, uh, the Pacific between various um, sort of the American part and the Commonwealth part and the French part, and that we don't talk enough across those, uh, those barriers. So the work of this, uh, of this conference and the many, many partners involved here of sort of breaking down those uh, barriers and connecting students, exchanging students, getting students collaborative, uh, researcher, researchers and students working collaboratively on these challenges uh, will, will strengthen all of us. And I think there's also this, this sense of islands have a perspective on sustainability that is um, perhaps unique and it is um, uh, sort of marketable to the rest of the world. So we heard just last week of uh, uh, communities in Idaho feeling themselves islanded and appreciating a, an island perspective on sustainability. Um, so there are ways that, that, that the connections to institutions like Arizona State University can help strengthen this and can bring the kind of island wisdom that we recognize exists in islands in the Caribbean and the Pacific and around the world, uh, that we can bring these things to uh, larger audiences and build this capacity. So. Uh, Thank you to, uh, to Anita for the question and for the panel for this great opportunity to um, compare notes. Thank you very much, President Kreiss, and for reminding us uh, as a University of Guam the, uh, uh, the importance of taking a look at our region and how through our partnerships, not just uh, within our, our institutional re uh, regional partners, but also across the globe, that we can leverage more uh, to do more as far as building capacity. And uh, there is much to be learned about uh, uh, island sustainability from an island wisdom perspective. And we're looking forward to how that unfolds even uh, further with the much broader partners that we have. And now we'll turn you over to our last uh, present, uh, Dr. David Lastner, who is the president of the University of Hawaii. Dr. Lassner's current agenda includes a focus on helping more Hawaii residents earn college credentials and developing an innovation sector to strengthen the state's economy while creating high quality jobs. He is also advancing UH's commitments to sustainability and becoming a model indigenous serving university. An active principal investigator, Lassner led Hawaii's major stateside project funded by the US Department of Commerce that interconnected all public schools libraries, and campuses on six islands with fiber optics. He has had support from the National Science Foundation over 20 years, focused on research and education networking and, and cyber infrastructure. He is principal investigator for the Maui High Performance Computing Center and for the Pacific Disaster Center, uh, which are major US Department of Defense programs in Maui. President Lasner. How is the University of Hawaii capacity for a sustainable global future? Thank you, Aloha, and it's a pleasure to be here. It's um, Kamehameha Day in Hawaii. When we celebrate um, uh, Kamehameha the Great, he united the indigenous people of these islands in 1810 to create the first Hawaiian kingdom, and I'm honored and privileged to, to be able to live and, and work here. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't be there this year as I was last year. It was a pleasure to be um, on the president's panel. Uh, thank you with you, Tom. You were a new president there at that time. And um, it's great to renew the relationships with the University of Guam, which are indeed deep between um, the University of Hawaii and the University of Guam across uh, so many dimensions, um, both for me personally and for so many of our faculty and administrators. So um, maybe a brief comment about the University of Hawaii, and it came out in my introduction. Um, 
so we have formally embraced within our mission statement, along with the traditional education, research, and service, uh, commitment uh, to a journey to become a model Indigenous serving university. And it is indeed a journey um, on which we are challenged every day, uh, but it's also an incredible opportunity for our state and our only public, in, uh, public institution of higher education. We also embraced uniquely in our mission adopted by our Board of Regents, a commitment to sustainability. And what is perhaps most interesting about that is that we did that at the behest of our students. Um, they reached out and they said, we wanna be at a university that is committed to sustainability. They drafted the language, which our Board of Regents uh, eventually adopted. And I won't uh, belabor it, you can Google it. Uh, and actually I talked about it last year when I was on the president's panel um, in Guam with many of you. Um, I think what I wanna say today, um, you know, all of us, we haven't talked very much about um, the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on all of us in uh, higher education and across society. But today, as I think about sustainability and as our institution thinks about sustainability, we are very focused about creating a new future for our state and our university that is more sustainable than what we have endured in the past. So um, Hawaii has, uh, we're one of the top three states for unemployment right now. And that's because our economy is completely dominated by the tourism sector which shut down to almost nothing in a single day when um, we, um, we basically shut down hotels, transportation to the islands and so forth. And we are also seeing an incredible resurgence of our environment just in these two months with no tourists and with people staying indoors. The changes to our coral reefs, to our water, to traffic, to almost every aspect of life have been monumental and noticeable to everyone across our islands. So today, what I think about every day is what is the role of the university, even as our budget is being slashed due to a, a state economy that is incredibly challenged, um, we need to double down on the things that are most important. So some of them are the usual things that, um, you know, we all hear about. We need to educate more of our citizenry with education after high school. Um, we need a stronger, and, and we're uh, over $400 million in uh, extramural research every year. That's an industry for the state that we need to nurture, creates thousands of jobs and ripple effects. Um, we need to focus on the workforce in healthcare um, and across all of those sectors. But what I'm most excited about right now is our work to see new economic sectors and to help develop new approaches to our old sectors. And let me just highlight a couple of those and then I know we have some additional questions. So like everyone, um, we're thinking about building a stronger sector in technology. We need to do better at computer science and engineering. Thank you, um, uh, Michael, for loaning us one of your deans to help with a review of our programs uh, just a few months ago. And we have some great ideas about how we can rebuild it. For us, something that's unique is a focus on digital creative media technologies and building on the strength of the people of Hawaii, uh, both the indigenous people, but our other cultures in telling their stories. Um, a second area for us is food and agriculture. So we have um, uh, what is probably an unhealthy tension between those who want to see us grow all of our own food and those who want to see us grow export crops that can generate revenue from outside. But we have not figured out agriculture in this state since the end of our plantation economy. And that's something that I think the university has to figure out how to bring those two together. Um, we have incredible strengths in climate change and resilience uh, with both federal funding and amazing researchers who collaborate across the Pacific. Um, we can do more forms of sustainable, renewable energy here than almost anywhere on Earth. We're exploring what microgrids look like at scale, and we have amazing expertise at understanding how to protect and restore uh, the native environments that were here for 
thousands of years before Western contact, um, building back on some of that indigenous knowledge. And last, let me um, comment on our 900-pound uh, gorilla uh, of the economics here, which uh, is the hospitality or tourism industry. We need to figure out a new approach to um, the tourism industry. What does sustainable tourism mean that lives in harmony with our people and is a positive influence for our people rather than a relief for so many when it goes away other than economically? So um, that's what I'm up to. Wonderful. Thank you so much, President Lasner. Always a pleasure to see you. And uh, gosh, uh, like, like our institution, uh, we're in a tiny little island and uh, the, the problems, the challenges, the opportunities are, are the same. And we're just very grateful for uh, the partnership uh, we have with your institution uh, to, draw, uh, to draw from and see how we can also participate at, at uh, scaling up uh, different opportunities, especially in terms of renewable energies. And I love how you've uh, uh, also embraced uh, uh, indigenous knowledge and the importance of respecting what you have. Uh, uh, happy Kamehameha Day to, to you as well. <laughs> and looking forward to, uh, to more conversations and certainly uh, more ways that we can partner together. Okay, uh, so we have taken up a lot of time, but there is so much uh, value in what all of our presenters have, have uh, made. And unfortunately, we'll have to skip the three questions and and, and go straight to the closing. And in this, uh, we like to hear from each of you. And unfortunately, we're only giving you uh, uh, roughly 30 seconds or less uh, to a short message to our students and to our learners. What steps can they take today to help achieve a sustainable global future? What steps can they take today to help achieve a sustainable global future. We'll begin with President Crow. Well, I mean, to the students in terms of uh, help moving towards a sustainable future, one, think like a marathon runner. It's a lifelong thing. You'll devote the entirety of your life to it. Second, uh, broaden your learning base uh, as much as you possibly can. Uh, do not uh, focus only on the narrow, maybe specialize, but keep yourself broadly focused. And three, fearlessly drive change. Nothing is going to happen unless we fearlessly drive change. Wonderful, thank you so much for that. Uh, next, we'll hear from uh, Dr. Hall. Well, the first thing I would say to students is that they should come into educational institutions uh, wanting to uh, break down boundaries and learn in a creative manner. Uh, that just because there are prescribed disciplines, they should not stay locked into those because sustainability cuts across all disciplines and they should be willing to do that. Uh, the second and most important, even more important than the first, is that they must develop good values and be willing to put those values into practice. What we're seeing across this nation and, uh, and around the world uh, in regards to the fight against social injustice is something that is driven by students and or young individuals. <clears throat> and that is the greatest test of changing the society for the better. And I would encourage them to follow what they see. Okay. Thank you very much for that. And now we'll hear from Vice Chancellor Hain. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I just want to start by acknowledging the fact that here in New Zealand, we have an incredibly productive and collaborative partnership with the native people here, um, the Tangata Whenua or the Māori of Aotearoa, New Zealand. So I thought I would end my message um, with the words of the Māori people, um, kia kaha, kia maya, kia mana wanui which translates into be strong, be brave, and be steadfast. But I also want to acknowledge um, the incredible success that New Zealand has experienced in the fight against COVID-19. And a large part of that success has been driven by the fact that our government's approach has been underpinned by um, scientific and expert advice, much of which has come from the University of Otago, which is an incredible point of pride for us. So I'd also like to end um, with the words of our current Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Jacinda Ardern, 
be kind and look after each other. Wonderful, thank you so much for that. Uh, and now we'll hear from President Kreis. Thank you, Anita. Thank you for all of those great comments. And I think the um, uh, thinking about this period of time, I don't know what we'll eventually call this the crisis of 2020 or whatnot, but the, there's a relationship between the, the pandemic, the economic uh, collapse, and the, um, and the demands for social justice and an end to um, systematic, systematic racism is that um, that this is a time when we need to think in new ways, and this is a rebel. This is the opportunity for a revolution across the board. And students typically are major players in revolutions and changing the way that we think and act and behave. And so I think the. Um, uh, this opportunity to sort of crawl out of the economic challenge and the pandemic challenge and the social justice challenge um, is, uh, is related to imagining a world that is more sustainable in all of those dimensions, social justice dimension, economic dimension, health dimension, uh, and environmental sustainability dimension. So I think for students to be thinking really imaginatively, realize that they have power, um, and that uh, that we all need help in thinking this new this new world into being, and in uh, the uh, in the um, Chamorro language, the term Inafa Maolek uh, is a is a, a basic principle about the idea of making things right, and it's typically understood to be in human relationships, but it seems to me that there's even a broader possibility there of thinking of making all things right, um, and that, that, that students can think of their mission as making all things right and imagining this new future. Thank you very much, uh, President Kreis. And finally, we'll hear from President Lasner. Um, you know, the, the comments have been so wise. Um, and I agree with everything my, my colleagues have said. So let me just close with a few words. Um, like uh, Vice Chancellor Hain, I will share a Hawaiian, um, we say, olelo no ea, or um, words of wisdom. Um, Ohe pau kaike i kahalau ho'okahi. All knowledge is not taught in one school. Okay, okay, thank you very much. It has been an honor and uh, you have shared with us remarkable gems. I want to say on behalf of uh, everyone who has uh, zoomed into this uh, inaugural virtual conference, I want to say in our language, Sendankalu Nesuz Maasi to uh, President Crow, to President Hall, Vice Chancellor Hain. President Kreis, President Lasner, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedules. And this uh, wraps up our panel uh, and uh, we look forward to uh, opportunities when we can see you all in person. Sisyus Masi. Bye-bye. Aloha. <laughs>